Yo, what's going on, family? I'm back again with another video, and this time coming at you, we got part two of the Georgia State rebuild. And I know if you were watching part one, you saw how I adjusted the schedule, and now we got the biggest game of the season coming up against Ohio State, the Ohio State University. And right now, the biggest thing that I don't like about this game is I accidentally scheduled it for us to be a home game. And when all reality, team from the Big Ten, the number three team in the nation, is not going to travel down to the Sunbelt School to play them on their own field. And that's just something I got to be more mindful of moving forward. I want it to be as realistic as possible. So just making sure I pay attention to every single detail. Because that's the whole point of this series. It's a rebuild. We're trying to rebuild state into a powerhouse. And as you can see, starting for Ohio State, they got Will Howard, their 6'4", 237 pound senior from Pennsylvania. And the first thing I noticed about this quarterback is he looks a lot like Peyton Manning. So if his play style is anything like Peyton Manning's, the biggest thing is going to be stopping his pass game. He's not going to be mobile. He's going to stick in that pocket. So with that being said, we're mainly going to focus on running the dime scheme on defense. Going to have that extra DB in the field to kind of try to mitigate the risk that we have on pass plays. And so far on this drive, we have not been able to stop him. And as I say that pass play risk, he takes out of the pocket and gets a big game for a first down. And right now we got a third and one on our own 23-yard line. He hands it off for another first down. Looks like we cannot stop that run game right now. We are able to stop the pass game because we know he's going to pass, but right now our run defense is struggling. So that, and it looks like we got an injury off the bat. Looks like it's Brown. Second time in two weeks that he goes down, so hopefully it's nothing too serious this time. Hopefully our medical staff keeps us up to date on his injury status, but right now our main focus is stopping this run game because it looks like they're going to get into the end zone on their first possession of the game. And that's definitely not a good sign for us so far because you know in recruiting we've been targeting those skilled positions we got that running back Zach Thomas and then we got Ben Humphreys that defensive back coming out we have nobody in the trenches nobody to really stop this lack of a run defense that we have now so it's definitely going to be a problem that we have to solve internally our struggles in the trenches is not going to get fixed during that transfer portal or recruiting season so really going forward our defensive line coach is going to play a pivotal role for us this season so hopefully going into the half he can able you know rally the troops and get everybody back on the same focus and stopping that run and right now we're sitting at a third and 14 from our own territory haven't really been able to move with the ball downfield a little kick back out the uh, backfield to Brock doesn't go for much fourth and ten we end up punting the ball and so far on this game it does not look like we can hang with those power five conferences but we'll see how it goes as we move into the second quarter and into that second half but right now it's a good stop off the edge from Swint that's definitely a good sign from the defense right now we got them 30 and 7 from the 50 yard line let's see if we can get another stop and we do we got lucky right there that was a bad throw by the quarterback but let's get our offense back on the field and one of the things that this team has impressed me about so far is we know how to match the energy Say, for instance, our offense is giving up a lot of points. Our defense might give up a couple points, you know, to the to the opposing team. But if our offense is struggling, our defense is really going to pick up their end of the bargain. And I'm saying that as Gibson throws a dot, looks like he's going past the 50-yard line into Ohio State territory. And anytime we get into the opposing team's territory, we got to come away with a score. So right now I'm expecting our offense. And Gibson throws a pick. And that's absolutely something we can't have right there. We got to work on being able to reduce the amount of turnovers we're having, especially when we're in the opposing team's territory. Now, we're going to need a really big stop right here from our defense. Like I was just saying, our defense kind of knows when to hold up their end of the bargain. And as I say that, we get a pick right off their bat on their first play of the drive. And right here, we definitely have to capitalize on offense. So Gibson Brock definitely going to have to get on the same page so we can move the ball down the field right now we're sitting at our own eight yard line so it's going to be a long thought out drive and if we're able to successfully manage this game clock ohio state should not get the ball back with any time left in this half but i'm gonna go ahead and play devil's advocate i know we're playing the number three team in the nation so our offense is a little bit jittery so i'm saying ohio state shouldn't get the ball back if we give it back to them, they shouldn't get the ball back with anything more than two minutes left to go in the half. And right now, we got stopped for a loss. We got a fourth and four. I'm going for it. Like I said, I don't want to leave Ohio State any time on the clock. And I'm fully confident that Gibson going to be able to successfully get this fourth down pickup for us. And as I say that, he does. And we move the ball past the 50-yard line. And right now, we're coming out with an empty set. Got my tight end running a, a drag right across the middle. Going to hit him for a quick gain. And so far, we're doing pretty good on that clock management. Right now, we got about 2 minutes, 20 seconds left to go in the half. I got my wide receiver running a slant route across the middle, hitting him. 
getting about to the 16 yard line of Ohio State and that play is going to take us to the two minute warning and trust me I usually don't like to throw a lot of drag routes but I'm having to do that because I don't want to go into the half down 7-0 we played a good half especially from our defensive side so just to go into the half at least tied will be a better bolt for us going into that second half and hand off out the backfield to our secondary back Beasley just trying to keep that clock moving and right now we got a second and goal about a minute left to play in the half I got Brock back in the backfield. Looked like he's going to go on a flat route. He's not open. Can't hit him. But I got my receiver coming across the middle. And so far, this has been an amazing drive. We got it down to less than 30 seconds on the game clock. I run the ball. Ohio State is going to go ahead and call a timeout. I'm not really sure why they're calling the timeout. I guess they want to try to get the ball back. And I'm able to hit Beasy right here on that out route. He's able to get in for the score. Looks like we're going to go into the half 7-7. And Ohio State does get the ball back with about 20 seconds left to go in the half. They do an option play. He tries to get away. He doesn't really go for much. And these passes underneath, I'm fine with giving them up for the rest of the half. I just don't want any big plays going over our heads. They do another drag route across the middle, still in their own territory. And I just want to play deep. I think they're going to go for a pass right here. Don't want anything to go over our heads. They do a little handoff, and we're not able to stop him. And he gets into the field goal range. Now, hopefully, this is far kick. Hopefully, their kicker is not able to miss. Uh, he makes it. So it looks like we're going to come into that second half down 10-7. Only by three, not by a full touchdown, so it's not as bad. If I get a touchdown right here on this drive, we're right back in it. Take the lead, 14-10. And Gibson being our leader on offense, our senior leader on offense, he has to, you know, rally the troops in the huddle, let them know, hey, we're only down three. If we get a score right here, we're right back in it. We're going to be up four. This is the number three team in the nation. We're hanging in there. We're showing them that state has heart. So just keep pushing. And at the end of the game, we're going to come out with that W. So far, it's been a pretty successful drive. Been able to move the ball down the field with the pass. And right now, I'm heading off the Brock out the backfield. Gets a five-yard gain. I'm going to go ahead and get over to third and one. Hand off to Brock. Let's see if he can get that first down. He can't stop fourth and one, but you know we're going to go for it. Got to go with that QB sneak. It's going to work for us every time. It looks like nothing was happening on first or second down. Going to go ahead and take a shot downfield on third and 12. Get us into a fourth and manageable situation. Fourth and one again. Know we're going to go for that QB sneak. They can't stop it. So far, we're doing a great job moving the ball down the field. Just going to take some body blows right here. Start running the ball. We're deep in their territory. And I'm giving up a sack. Looks like it's going to take us back to like the 28-yard line. Not a big deal. Still in field goal range. But definitely want to get a little bit closer so it's not as wobbly. And it doesn't look like we're trying to get closer. Gibson saw something he liked. He went for it. He was open. But it was a bad throw. Wasn't able to get it. Got to go for the kick. And we're able to get it. Tie the game again. 10-10. Right now we got a tie ball game. One minute left to go in the third quarter. Let's see if we can get a stop right here on defense. Get our offense back on the field. Still with a tie game. And Will Howard throws a ball right to our middle linebacker. Instead of trying to pick it off, he swats it. I'm not mad at him, but... Got to try to pick the ball off right there in that situation. And they throw an out route, able to hit their receiver for a 15-yard gain, moving the ball downfield, and they got their halfback coming out the backfield on the angle route, going for a huge gain. And that's what happens when you make mistakes on the defensive end. We got two big plays back-to-back. -back. Now they're in our territory, deep in our territory. And definitely going to need to get some stops right here. We know they're deep in our territory, so they're going to look to run the ball. So we got to stack that box, be heavy in that box, Definitely play right now to stop the run. I'm not looking for any pass plays, all run plays. Right now they got a second and three, about four minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. Handed off another run play, and nobody is able to tackle right now. He goes for a first down. Y'all get the gist of what's about to happen, so I'm just going to jump ahead. They scored a touchdown, a run play, scored a touchdown. So now we're down 17-10, with about four minutes left to go in the game. So right now we're going up against Ohio State and the game clock. So we've got to be mindful of this game clock now. We're not able to move the ball at all downfield. It's a three and out. Going to go ahead and punt the ball since we're so deep in our territory. And definitely going to be leaning on the defense heavy right here. Cannot give up another score. Cannot make it a two-possession game with less than five minutes to go in the game. So definitely going to send the house right here. Let's try to get to the quarterback. Stop any momentum that they do have. Not able to get them. Hit their receiver right across the middle wide open since we sent our linebackers on the blitz. And right now we got about three minutes, 30 seconds left to go in the game. Third and seven is going to be a big – you can't get a stop, and they're able to get the first down. And it looks like our defense is not going to be able to hold up their end of the bargain. We're going to jump ahead. Two-minute warning, and they're running back taking it to the house. We're going to go down two possessions with one minute and 55 seconds to go in the game. So we're definitely going to have to get deep in our playbook right here, call out any Hail Marys, any one-hitter-quitter plays that we have. And to keep it blunt, if we don't score here and if we don't score quick – 
this game is going to be over. And I see I got my man open on that slant route. That linebacker came in a little bit, was able to fit it into that tight window. And right now we're near the 50-yard line, about a minute and 40 seconds left in the game. Hit my receiver on that corner route. We're definitely moving the ball right here. Definitely good to see. Coming out with an empty set. Let's see who we get open. Trying to target my speedy receiver right here. The defender's able to jump the gun, get that pass deflection. We're sitting at the second and 10, about a minute 30 left in the game. Gibson's calling some audibles at the line of scrimmage, trying to get somebody open. Nobody's open. Looks like he's going to take off for a big game. We're sitting at a third and inches, a minute left to go in the game. And as you can see, I still got all three of my timeouts because I'm playing for saving these timeouts on the defensive end. If we're able to hold that offense to a three and out, we get the ball back with some sort of time on the game clock, I'm definitely going to try to make a big play. And as you see, we're getting into the end zone. Right now, we're going to try to go for this onside kick, try to make an instant classic right here. Ohio State recovers it, but the good thing is we got about 50 seconds left, and I got all three of my timeouts. So if I can hold them to zero first downs, got all faith in my defense, we are going to get the ball back with some type of time left on this game clock. And we're able to stop them on second and six. They don't get any yards. Third and six, biggest play of the game right here. They're handing it off. They're trying to get outside, but we're able to stop them. Great job. So they're on our 35-yard line. Definitely in field goal range, trying to go for this kick. Let's see if we get. Looks like it's going to be far right. He misses it. So now we're going to have a chance to come back on offense with about 30 seconds left. Let's see what we can do. Gibson drops back in the gun. He throws a perfect dot to his receiver right there on that out route. Looks like a little corner route. Goes for a nice gain. Now we're in Ohio State territory. 25 seconds left. Takes another shot downfield, and he gets it. All right, now we got a 24-23 ball game. Y'all know me, man. I don't go for the tie. I'm going for the dub. And right now, I'm going to have Brock coming out the backfield, going on the out route. But I'm also going to have the receiver up top going for this drag route. And Gibson throws a horrible throw. And that was a crazy ending to this game, man. Regardless of this outcome, we went up against a number three team in the nation. Gave it all we had. Really should have walked away with the dub. But things happen. We lose by one. And our record drops down to one and two. Nothing really big happening on the recruiting tip this week, so let's go ahead and jump into our next game. But, man, that was a really close game. against the number three team in the nation, it came down to the last play. We lose on a play that we're making nine times out of ten. I, I'm i really at a loss for words. I don't know whether to be happy that we hung in or just distraught that we, were able to, that we weren't able to pull away from that last second win. But that's a big push for us going forward. We're definitely going to use that to our advantage. It shows us that we can hang in with those top five, top ten schools. Any Really, any ranked school that we go up against for the rest of the season, I have no – I'm not worried about it. I know we can pull – I know we can pull it off. I've seen what we did. It's a weird spot. It's a really weird spot. Really supposed to be two and one. But I know dwelling on that past loss. Right now we got Southern coming into town. GSU versus GSU. Hashtag state, not Southern. And if you're anywhere in the South, you know about this rivalry. It's been going on for as long as I can remember since I've been growing up. It's been a thing. Hashtag state, not Southern. Hashtag Southern, not state. These two schools in Georgia. Of course, you got Tech and UGA. But right under that, you got state and Southern. And really big first drive for our defense. And look, we got McGee trying to cut outside. He doesn't get it, but nice return there. But really nice drive from our defense. Let's see if our offense can answer right here for us. And right now, we're starting off the drive. Heading off to our workhorse, Brock. He goes for a seven-yard gain on first down. Now you got a second and three coming up. Looks like we're going to go with that stick play. Got that receiver right across the middle on that slant route. He gets popped, but he hangs on to the ball. Really good hit by the defender. But right now we got a first and ten in their territory. We're pushing hard, and we keep having these receivers wide open. Nice gain. Looks like he gets it down to the eight-yard line. Three minutes left in the first quarter. We got Gibson in the gun now. Hands it off to Brock. It doesn't really go for much of a game on first down. And I love that we got a, a strong back end, Brock. But I really want to start honing, on, honing in on this pass game that we have. Of course, we got a solid run game, but we can't just be one-dimensional. Because when we get later on into the season, especially that SBC conference games, teams are going to make you go for what you don't usually go for. So if I see I have a strong run game, I'm going to force you to pass the ball. My defense is going to be schemed to stop that run. But let's go ahead and give the flowers to Brock. He got in on a touchdown on that last drive. And what I'm noticing now, Southern does not like going into their huddles. They're running no huddles. If they run a run play, they don't get out of bounds. They're running a no huddle. They do a pass play, they don't get out of bounds. They're running a no huddle. So to counteract that, I really can just send a blitz every time because I know eight times out of ten is going to be a run play. Like right here, I'm pretty sure 
Third and two is running down. Oh, they're not running it. And they hit their back out of the backfield for a first down. But I'm pretty positive on first down and second down, it's going to be a run. It's either going to be a run to the to the running back or it's going to be some type of option play. So what I want to do now is just start sending that blitz to kind of counteract that run. And, of course, it's going to leave us vulnerable in the secondary if he does kind of pull back on that option and throws a pass downfield. But that's just something we're going to have to live with. If we get burnt one time, maybe we'll adjust. But right now, I'm going to keep sending that blitz. And I see right now he has an empty set in the backfield. So I'm going to run zone. Just kind of make sure all the receivers are covered downfield. I'm taking that middle linebacker back. Creates a lot of room for that quarterback to take off and scramble for a first down. They're coming back to the line now. Still in a no huddle formation. Looks like they're putting that back back in the backfield. So I'm going to go ahead and just back over to that blitz scheme. Because I know what's coming now. It's going to be a run. And here it goes, that run, but we sniffed it out. Goes for no gain. Well, a gain of one. And we'll take that play every single time. And now they're sitting at a second and nine. I know they're still going to try to run it on second down. So in theory, right now they're sitting behind the sticks. And when I say behind the sticks, I mean way, way behind the sticks. Second and nine on a team that does nothing but run, they're way behind. And right now they do a little pass play. Catch the receiver coming over the middle route. Still hold them to a decent gain, about four yards. Right now they're sitting at a third and five. Quarterback drops, hits his receiver on that out route, man, and it goes for a first down. Still in Georgia Southern Territory, so not really too worried, but a little starting to get a little bit worried now if we can't get a stop right here. And we were in, man, sent that blitz, and it looks like it burnt us right there. He's going all the way to the house for a touchdown. And the reason why I burnt us so much is because I sent that cornerback. He was the one that came in on the blitz, the one that was guarding the man that caught the ball. So it left us completely vulnerable over there on that left side. And right now we're sitting at a third and six on our own 25-yard line. Five minutes left to go in the second quarter. Let's see what Gibson can draw up for us. Got some drag routes coming across the middle, wide open. Goes for a first down, nice game. And you know what I'm thinking? I just started thinking about this. What I really want us to get going forward in recruiting is a really, really speedy wide out, like a 98, 99 speed. Because what I can do, I can find those holes in the defense and just send him on those go routes, and he's going to burn them every single time. And, of course, I'm not going to try to spam him every single play. I want to try to still make it realistic and try to find those routes and, and pick apart the defense. But just having a speed guy like that would be so refreshing for us to have here. And nice dot right there by Gibson. Not really a dot, but nice throw right there by Gibson, hitting that corner route for a touchdown. Now we're up 14-7. to seven. But that being said, with that speed receiver, we're definitely going to need to get a field general quarterback to go along with him, somebody that can throw the ball really far downfield. Because I think right now the only quarterback that I'm really targeting and recruiting this class is Paul Sampson, that scrambling QB from Honolulu. So it probably won't be until next season we change conferences, get that conference siege, and get a lot of those recruiting grade upgraded that I'll be able to go out and get a field general quarterback. And right there, they ran an out route on third and 11. You sniffed it out. Fourth and three, they're putting the ball. Looks like we're getting the ball back with about three minutes left to go. Kicked it off to McGee. It's always dangerous when he gets it. Goes for a nice game right there. Puts us in Southern Territory to start our drive. And when we're playing lower conference teams like this, I have – I always speak too soon. Gibson throws an interception right there. Let's see if we can get the tackle. We got the tackle. Okay. But like I was going to say, when we're playing lower conference schools and we get the ball – in their territory to start our drive, I'm 100% confident that we're going to score. We're going to get some type of score. And those turnovers that we're having now when we're starting drives in such a good field position is something that we can't allow to happen next year when we're in the ACC or the SEC conference because those teams are just going to eat us alive when we're making those big mistakes in crucial situations. And right now we're sitting at a two-minute warning. They got a third and five at about a 50-yard line can't get that stop they hit the receiver coming across the middle and giving up a score right here to end the half is definitely something that we do not want to do i feel like in every single game this season we've given up a score in the last two minutes of the first half tries to hit his receiver in triple covers don't know how we didn't walk away with a pick but good pass deflection right there they're sitting at a second and 10 about a minute 45 seconds left in the clock 
and we were able to get to him for a sack. Now they're sitting at a third and 13, still running their no-huddle offense. Let's see if we can – we're going to send a blitz right here on fourth, third down. Got to make sure we get to the quarterback or at least force a, a bad throw because we already got burnt one time, and there it goes. If we get a sack, and then we get the fumble and recover it on the 50-yard line. We get the ball back to our offense, already up seven. Let's see if we can get another score right here, and let's go into the half up 14. And that play right there moves us into Southern Territory. Nothing happening on first or second down. Now we're sitting at a third and two. Got a receiver wide open across the middle. Gets down to about the 25-yard line. One minute left to go in the first half. I definitely don't want to speak any more about scoring because I don't want to jinx us anymore. Let's just take it a play at a time. His Brock coming out of the backfield. Let's see if he can lower his shoulder. He does, and he gets into the end zone. Now we're up 7-21 to 21 with 50 seconds left to go in the first half. This highlight reel season that Brock is having, I'm definitely going to make a highlight tape and send it over to Zach Thomas, that four-star recruit that we're trying to get, and let him know that, hey, if you come here to state, these are the type of touches and opportunities you're going to get. You're going to be able to boost your draft stock here. I'm not talking about your junior and your senior year. I'm talking about coming in as a freshman. You're going to get these touches. You're coming in as a four-star. You're a lot higher rated than the players that we do have on our roster now. So you're definitely going to be at least competing for a starting position coming into the season. I always want to say competing. You don't want to just offer somebody that starter role coming into the season especially a freshman coming in because they'll get big headed they might not perform as well in training camp and then you just have to go back on your words so just say you'll have the chance to compete for that starting position good stop right there from our defense we're getting that sack got about 10 seconds left to go in the first half let's see what we can do get another stop we do and we push them out of bounds so we don't even have to use the timeout we get the ball back three seconds left just gonna take a deep shot down the field let's see if we can walk away with doesn't catch it. I'm okay with that. We're going into the half up 21 to 7. And we get the ball back. So we had the opportunity to make it a 28 to 7 game before Southern's offense even gets a chance to do anything about it. And I really like the fact in CFB 25 that they rotate the um your running backs in and out. You're not having that same running back in the entire game. You might he busts out for a big play. He comes out. You got your second string running back coming in. And I really love that because I got a senior running back in Beasley. Who, who is able to get touches when we're doing it that way as Gibson throws a deep bomb down the field. Got us in red zone territory, handed off to our war cross Brock, and he walks in into the end zone, making it a 28-7 to game. We are definitely making it. Wow, and he's and they're running back trying to make a big play. But we're definitely making it a statement game in what might be our last SBC game against our rivals, Georgia Southern. Going to be definitely a bittersweet game, but – not too <laughs> bitter because it's definitely a, a step in the right direction for this Georgia State program. And it's looking like this game is not even a competition for us anymore. It's a, a blowout, a 28-7 to game um, against a team that's in our own conference. So it's like we're, we're, we're definitely outgrowing this conference. Uh, definitely about time for us to make that leap. Third and five. Still in their own territory, but approaching the 50-yard line. Let's see if we can get a stop right here. I'm going to send the blitz because I know they're coming with a run again. Let's see. It, we missed the tackle, and it looks like he's going to get that first down. Got about three minutes left to go in the third quarter. Definitely want to make sure our defense is able to get a stop right here. I don't want to give up any more points to Southern, although it'll probably happen. It is what it is, but definitely going to try our best not to give up any more points great dot by their quarterback hitting their receiver right over the top of our linebacker looks like their team got caught in a little bit of a glitch right here they're not able to get the play call off so i'm just going to speed up i don't know what exactly happened first time i've ever seen that so that is going to push them back a little bit hopefully stop some of that momentum that they've been gaining so far on this drive so it looks like they're in the gun Got the receiver, I mean, they're running back in the backfield. Definitely going to be a run play, and he's cutting it back. He broke a tackle right there. Okay, he doesn't get in, but he gets all the way down to the five-yard line. First and goal, two minutes left to go in the third quarter. Hands it off for another run play, and we're not able to stop him. We tackle him, but he drags us all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. 28-14 to 14 game. Let's see if Gibson can go out and get another score for us here so he can have a little bit more breathing room as we head into the fourth quarter. Going to pick it up third and 12 from our own 15-yard line. Got our tight end wide open right there across the middle. Gets popped, but he doesn't hang on to the ball. Definitely going to need a big, big stand from our defense right here. Do not want to give up another touchdown and to make this a 21-28 to game. They already have really good starting field position. Started off around the 50-yard line. 
right now they're about the 47 second and six quarterbacks looking to the sideline to get that play call it's going to be a pass play they hit them and they move into state territory i definitely take fault for that big game right there i was controlling the strong safety i brought him down a little bit too much if i was in the right position right there i would have been able to pick that throw off and hopefully it would have taken it all the way back to the house don't want to build on that though they're still Got the ball. They're still trying to push it down. Feel wow, what a move by their running back. He's real shifty. Once again, they're going with a no huddle. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna snap it with probably about 40 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Quarterback's looking to the sideline to get his play call. He does another option play. That time it doesn't go to the house, but we did have it covered. But they do get the first down. We're gonna go ahead and sim over to third down. Nothing really happened on first or second down. As you can see, third down, he overshoots. Right now, they're lining up for the field goal. Looks like he's going to miss it a little bit to the right, and they miss it. So our defense definitely got lucky right there, able to walk away, giving up zero points right there on that drive. Our offense definitely has to be feeling the intensity. They just saw what this Southern offense can do if we do not get another score, and they would make it a one-possession game. Definitely do not want to do that. Kind of want to push the ball right here on this drive. Get a score, give us a little bit more breathing room. Now that we got the ball in Southern Territory, kind of want to start doing that clock management, keeping the ball on the ground, running this clock out. Because if we can keep that clock rolling, their offense won't have to get back on the field and we won't have to worry about anything. Probably going to get the ball back because they got about three minutes left to play on the clock and we're already in their red zone. Let's take a shot to the end zone. Gibson gets another touchdown pass this game. That puts us up. 35 to 14, three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Southern has the ball now on their own 25-yard line. Looks like he hits one of his tight ends or maybe his wide receiver on a curl route. Goes for a gain of six, second and four. Let's see if we can get a stop right here. He's looking to the sidelines to get his play call. He's got it, plays in. That blitz came home, and he they kind of burn us a little bit. Goes down in state territory about our own. 36 yard line hopefully this two minute con it's not going to come up they're going to get that play off before that two minutes let's see another pass play he they're doing they're not doing deep passes they're doing little check down passes and i'm fine with that we're up by 21 points i'm totally fine with them doing check down passes the rest of the game because when i said it done you guys are the ones that's down you want to chew up all of this clock you can do it because when i get the ball back I'm not, I'm, chew, I'm chewing up all the clock. So you want to chew up clock for me? Go ahead, help me out with doing my job. And this right here is the first play after the two-minute warning. Don't get that first now, and they stay in bounds. So that clock is going to keep rolling, sitting at a second and eight with about one minute, 45 seconds left to go in the ball game. They love those out routes. They don't hit it right there. Does not connect. Third and eight. Let's see if we can get one last stop. And we're not able to get that stop. They get the first down. It takes them all the way down to the five-yard line, and they call a timeout. So send about a minute and 40 left in the game. Let's try to keep them out the end zone. Hit them on the curl route right there. Inbounds. Going to keep that clock rolling. Got a rolling clock. One minute, 30 seconds left. Looking. He's calling some audibles at the line of scrimmage. See what he's seeing. And they're able to get into the end zone for a touchdown. Now we got one minute, 25 seconds left to go. All you have to do is recover the ball right here, and we don't. Wow, we do not recover that onside kick. Horrible call on our special teams coach. I definitely, it should let us call a timeout if we see that we don't have the right co coverage. But for whatever reason, it doesn't let you call a timeout once your special teams players are already set up. So we kind of just had to bite the bullet there on that play. They're pushing the ball downfield, 35-21. One minute, 15 seconds left to go in the game. Let's see what we can do. That should, really should have been a pick if he would have jumped the ball correctly. Right now, the quarterback's dropping back. He sees his man. He wants to take that shot. Let's see what we can do. And he catches it. Wow. 28 to 35 with one minute left to go in the game. And it looks like they're going to try another arms like kick. Not sure why our hand team is not on the field in that play. Like we have a one possession game with a minute left. Like our spe a conversation has to be had with our special teams coach as to why he's not putting our hands team in. We have a one a one possession game with one minute left. Like that's common sense. Well, luckily we're able to walk away with the win, thirty five to twenty eight, moves our record back to two and two. We got Mumu walking away with some belt defensive player of the week. 
Conway with zero interceptions, but he had two tackles and zero touchdowns. Not sure how that got him player of the week, but hey, I'm all for it. And right now we got three of those four stars. They have us first on their rankings that change. Nathan and Paul uh, definitely looking really good for them. Zach as well. So if you can just walk away with two of these, maybe four of these four-star recruits, that'll be amazing for us next year Um, because we're definitely going to need some four-star recruits on this roster because, like I keep saying, we're trying to go to those ACC or either the SEC conference. Definitely going to have to have some of those big-name players come play at this school so we can at least try to compete. And right now it's a tight race for Nathan. He's got us, Florida State, and North Carolina. He's got a visit for us scheduled for week five. Roy Torrance is also in a close race as well. I don't have enough hours to get him on campus. Um, ben Humphreys, let's see how he's looking. He, we got him pretty locked away. I'm not sure if Tech is going to make any big moves. Same thing with Iglesias. We got him pretty locked away. Kate Thorne is that four-star competing with Miami. Let's try to take some hours away from them too so I can try to get some hours to get somebody brought on campus for a visit. I'm going to take away 25 family and friends from Iglesias, Roy Torrance. I'm not sure if I really want to have him come to campus. I don't know how beneficial that will be, but let's go ahead and send it for Ben Humphreys. Let's have him come on campus when we play ODU. And as you see, all of these grades that we have is, is either yellow, red, or orange. We have one, maybe one or two, depending on the player, but the one is usually um, – proximity to home so we're only able to get players that are close to georgia state and now i got 10 more hours left to allocate zach thomas he's so right now we're the only school that's really offered him a a scholarship but he is from north carolina um just re-looking at ben let's see what we have him doing when he comes on campus paul nobody's he's got an offer but nobody's really competing for paul so what i can kind of do right now Let's just go ahead and take that away from him. Let's get him scheduled for a visit as well. Um, uh, so his are yellow. He likes playing time and proximity to home. Let me see what we can do with that. Let's just go ahead and put 10 hours back on him because I don't know how beneficial him coming for a visit would be with those two yellow grades. So I'm going to just search Zach Thomas on social media for this week, and I'm going to go ahead and get Paul Sampson slotted for a um a visit because he has an offer from another school. Zach Thomas doesn't have an offer yet, so I have more wiggle room there. So let's just go ahead and get Paul Sampson on campus for that game, and then we'll go from there. So it looks like we fell out of contention for Sammy, but still first on Willingham's list. He has a visual ske visit scheduled as well. So now let's just go ahead. We got about 120 hours now that we can allocate. So now it's time to get a visit scheduled for Zach Thomas, get him on campus, go ahead and send the house back at him. And it looks like we fell some with Roy. And, yeah, it's a Tennessee. And then Nathan, looks like FSU's making a big push for him. But we got his visual, visit still scheduled for week five. Um, let's go ahead and put some more hours over there. Put some more hours on Zach Thomas because I do not want that same thing to happen. And Tennessee took a huge leap. Like I don't, I don't know what happened, but I guess they struck out on one of their probably five star right tackles that they were trying to get. Now they're just swinging for any um any other four stars that they can get, and that's the bad thing about it. Um, being a such a lower lower ranked school, these power five schools when they swing out and miss on players, they can just come in and super player that you've been recruiting all season. But because they have so much prestige and so much ranking over you and their conference is better, like it's it's just better for the player, they're going to get them nine times out of ten. And what it's looking like being at a rebuilding school, you're definitely going to need to use your um your visits. Because I know when I'm usually doing dynasties with teams that are already pretty decent and pretty good, the visits don't really matter. It's just about sending in the house and then just finding that perfect pitch. But – with a lower school that you're having to rebuild, you're you're not going to find that perfect pitch because as you see, those grades are either red, yellow, or orange. So you're going to have to have them on campus for a visit. Week five versus Old Dominion University. We are two and two, and they are one and four. Let's get ready for this SBC showdown. 
definitely going to be a big game for us this week. As you guys know, we have some recruits sitting in the stands. So hopefully we can walk away with the W this week and also walk away with some commits. One of the big things I want to focus on this week is making sure Brock gets the ball heavily because I do want to make sure Zach Thomas ends up either committing or either is really, really close to committing by the end of this week because I don't want the same thing to happen where he flips. Because his one of his biggest things was the playing style. So if we can show him that we're really involved on getting our running backs involved in both the running game and the pass game, there really should be no reason why he doesn't commit. And also, he wants to get involved early. He wants to come in early and play. But like I said on the last game, it's no, there's no reason why he should not come and get touches his first year as a four-star recruit. Old Dominion looks like they're doing the same thing that Southern did last week. They're running a lot of these no-huddle plays. Um, so I'm going to start bringing the blitz just like I did last week. But them, quarterback tries to do a re-option play, goes for a no gain. Um, second down, sitting at the 26-yard line. So, uh, it's a weird set they have. They got a, a back right in front of the other back in the backfield. It's like a diagonal like connect, tic-tac-toe board. I don't know. I've never seen that play before. Or that formation. It doesn't matter. Any type of trying to trick us that they're trying to do is not working. They got a third and 12. We're still in the blitz again. He barely gets the pass off. We get him down fourth and two. Looks like they're going to kick the ball. Definitely not going to go for it in their own territory. But let's get it. This is what we came to see. Getting our offense on the field. So far, it doesn't look like anything's happening on this drive. I'm going to go ahead and jump to a fourth and three. Got my favorite play that did not work against that win versus Ohio State. But this time he catches it, gets us that first time, first down, and pushes us over into ODU territory. And that just has me thinking, I really wish that play would have worked against Ohio State. Then we'd be sitting at 3-1 and one rather than 2-2, two and two, and we probably would be be ranked. Um, but we did get Brock early, getting his touches early, which is a good sign. We got Zach Thomas in the stands. Hopefully he's taking note of this. And so far, so good on this drive. We've been able to push it. Um, doesn't look like they're going to be able to stop us. We hit our receiver on that out route, and he cruises into the end zone for a touchdown, puts us up 7-0. to zero. I'm interested to see now if our defense can get a stop, hopefully give up no points, get us back the ball so we can go up 14-0, give us that little cushion that we're looking for. And he's he got stuck behind the officer's line of scrimmage. I don't know what just happened. Two weeks in a row with weird plays. Um, last week it was that play where they did a no huddle and couldn't get that call off. And then this week he gets stuck behind the line of scrimmage and gets an encroachment penalty. Then we got a gap wide open on that left side. That running back is going to run right through. They're going with a no huddle. You know what the plan is. I'm bringing the blitz in the house trying to stop this run. And it looks like they know it. They're making some adjustments right now at the line of scrimmage. Going to go ahead and do that re option. We snipped it out. Great job. And if our D, D line can hold their their own against that old line and we're able to send that blitz and get our linebackers in free without getting touched it's no way that this read option is going to be effective at all so that's the biggest thing right now just making sure our d line is holding their end of the bargain and making those um making those spaces for our for our linebackers as they push through on that rush and i'm bringing my cornerback on this blitz and he fumbles the ball nice hit and we're going to take that all the way back to the house and I took a gamble right there. I sent the corner that was on that on that receiver that was in the slot, and I was and I was um, controlling that free safety. I was also bringing him in over the middle. So if that slot guy would have ran something to the out route or to the outside, he definitely would have beat us, and it definitely would have gone for six. But luckily, we were able to get there on that blitz, and that's what we do. Creating pressure is the biggest thing, like I said, for this defense. If we create the pressure, it's going to alleviate us a lot, and we're able to get that score going up 14-0. So far on this drive, does not look like anything is going for ODU. Got a third and 12. I know they're not going to do another run play. Sitting back in this zone. I'm trying to watch anything over that over that right side because I know they got three stacked over there. Let's see if we can control it. And he doesn't. He is wide open. Whoever was in that cover three at the top was completely not in their zone. Or if we were doing a cover two, it was completely botched because they had somebody run a real route to the outside. So that um, that corner had to either pick that inside route or that outside route. He ended up picking that outside route, and that quarterback saw it and was able to hit his receiver that was running that inside route. And right now we got an empty set, nobody in the backfield. 
really relying on Gibson right now to kind of push down the field, get us another touchdown on the board so we can get back to that 14-point lead, get us some more um, some breathing room. And right now he takes a shot that is a dot right down the field to his receiver, and he cruises into the end zone, puts us back up 21-7. to And right now our defense is definitely going to have to answer, make a stand, don't want to give up another touchdown right here. Good stop on that run play on first down. Right now they're sitting at a second and eight. About four minutes left to go in the second quarter. They're probably going to do another run play, but just to be safe, I'm sitting back in the zone. They do a run play. He breaks that tackle. Then, he, then our DB runs right by him, and he's able to get that first down and get out of bounds. And I promise you, right now, it's just the little things that we're doing that's really costing us. Because if we were able to get that stop right there on third down, we get the ball back up 14. Potentially, he can push this up to a 28-7 to lead. And we send a blitz. He does a, um, a play action, doesn't throw it off. And they kind of do the same play, but this time they give it off to the running back. We stop him. Right now, they're sitting at a third and 12. Definitely need to get a stop right here so we can get off the field. And we sack the quarterback. Great stop by our defense. Wishful thinking right here. We've been real quiet on our special teams. Let's see if McGee can take him to the house right here. Yeah, he's found a slot. He's gone. And that speed, nobody can catch him. That's why I love having one of those speed cheese guys on your team. Not just to run cheese plays, but on special teams, you just need somebody fast back there, somebody that's able to, you know, quickly cut, make make those cutbacks, quick agility. And right now we're up 21 points in the, third, in the second quarter with three minutes left to go before the half. These recruits that are here, they're, they've got to be loving it. This is definitely going to sway some folks to go ahead and commit to GSU. And we're able to get a big stop right there on second down. Now they're sitting at a third and four in their own territory. A stop here goes a long way. If we're able to get this stop right here, push them off the field, and hopefully get another scoring drop going. Quarterback is making some calls at the line of scrimmage. They run that curl route. We're not able to tackle him. He breaks it free. He gets about to the 50-yard line. And right now, our defense definitely has to read the room. They got to read the room. We need a stop right here. They're going to their no huddle. We got a blitz coming in. I'm going to go ahead and bring this safety down over to the left side. He's Good thing that lineman was able to get to him because I definitely <laughs> – I was bringing that safety all the way down so it was nobody to, to stop that quarterback if he got it outside. All right, I was sitting at the second and 12. Go with another read option, hand it off. We sniffed it out. Third and 11, big play right here. Definitely need to stop going with a halfback screen. They pop it to him, but we're able to stop him before he gets first down yardage. Fourth and three. Let's go ahead and knock all a fair catch. That was risky right there. Should have called it. But he luckily, he doesn't muffle it, and we get it. Right now, we got two minutes left. Let's see if we can make a big drive right here. Gibson hits his um tight end on a looks like a corner route that he was running. One minute, 30 seconds left around the 50-yard line. We got somebody crossing around that middle. Was able to hit him as well. We're going to run a screen to our running back, Brock. He's breaking free for big yardage. Gets us down to about the 22-yard line. Hey, once again, I hope Zach Thomas was looking at that. Zach Thomas, if you commit, you're going to get a lot of these plays. I'm going to go ahead and do a hot route. Send that tight end on a corner route so I can hit Beasley coming out the backfield with a lot of open space. He's able to get a first down for us. Right now we're sending that second and goal. About 30 seconds left with a running clock. It looks like Gibson got to break it outside. He's going on a QB scramble. He gets outside at the one-yard line. And y'all know the deal. We're going to do these cheese plays. We're right here. Go ahead and sneak it in for a QB sneak. Get us up 35-7 to seven on this last play of the half. We get him down for no touchdown. So that's good. 35-7 going into the second half, and we get the ball back. So, so far this game, definitely a really good outing for that first half. But like we saw last week, I'm not really trying to take my foot off the gas. Um, Southern came back a little bit, made it a close game, and we were up big early on with them. So definitely going to try to keep pushing right here. Want to push the ball downfield, get another touchdown. And just keep pouring it on. And if we can stop Gibson from committing turnovers, we're definitely going to push the ball downfield because we're not having – and I always speak it into existence. But we were having a really, really good game from Gibson so far. Um, first turnover of the game, I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but definitely it's, it's not convenient if we're trying to, you know, put this game away and not have them try to make a second-half comeback. If I had a solid backup – um, I hate to say it, but D Gibson would definitely be out of the game because, like, every single game he's throwing a pick, 
for no reason. And it's not fair to our defense because our defense is playing impeccable. But it's like we're giving them the ball in unfavorable circumstances. Like right now they're already in our territory and they, they're able to get a touchdown. We cut down to 35 to 14. Let's see if we can put some points on the board on this drive. Right now we got about a minute and 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Got a nice run there from Brock. We got a receiver wide open on that slant route, tries to hit that spin move. It looks like the spin moves have been patched as well. I don't know if that's a recent patch, but I know when the game first came out, spin moves and juke moves were both OP. And now it seems like no matter what I do, I cannot hit a spin move to save my life. Uh, we're going to kick a field goal. At least we get some type of points on the board. It's going to boost that lead up to 38-14. to 14. And now we're jumping into the fourth quarter. They have the ball on their own 25-yard line. They throw the out route to their receiver. Gets them down to second and three. Let's go ahead and sim up to third and seven. They're still in their own territory. They're taking a the deep shots, and he he doesn't hit it. He does not catch it. Our our cornerback was able to knock the ball out at the last second. Let's see if we can get one more stop right here on fourth down. We do, and we get the ball back. Time to ice it. I hope Thomas is still paying attention in the stands. I'm about to show him what it's like to, you know, to ice a game. We got fourth and four. We're in their territory. I'm not, I'm not kicking the ball. We're going for it. You know, I'm getting the ball out to the running back, out the backfield. Nice pass play. Thomas, once again, this is going to be you next season. And we're able to hit our receiver on that corner route. Looks like Gibson is falling in love with the corner routes now. He sees he's able to get his receivers open every time. And we're going to hand it off to Brock, and he's going to get into the end zone to boost his lead up to 45 to 14 with about two minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. And not really much else to do now. Kind of just watching the paint dry at this point. Running zone, he's got an empty set going. I know it's going to be a pass play. It's a quick pass, and he gets his man wide open. He's going to take it all the way to the house for a touchdown. Um, makes it a 45 to 21 lead. Don't want the same thing to happen. That Why? Why, why, why? And history is repeating itself. Because I know I said I didn't want this game to end up being a close game. And now he's hitting his receivers wide open in the middle of the field. They already recovered an onside kick. He's not making a tackle. Now he's going down to about the seven-yard line. They're going to put another score on the board. This is what we don't want to happen. Like, why can our defense and why can our team in general not just close out games? So, yeah, next week. Or this whole week during film study, it has to be a big focus. It's closing out games. Our special teams coach, why are you not putting the hands team in the – like, what What are we doing? The hands team needs to be in the game. Like, we are blowing these crazy leads. It's now 45 to 27, and we were up big. This was a blowout game, and now they're trying to come back. This is horrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down with the special teams coach. Hey, it's either you get this job done or we're going to have to get somebody else in here. That's going to get the job done. Like, put the hands team in. In the fourth quarter, I don't even care about returning a punt unless it's a close game. If we're up big, just go ahead and put the hands team in. That's it. We're able to walk away with a W, 45-27. to 27. We got Mumu winning some belt player of the week again. He had six tackles this week. Congratulations, Mumu. Well-deserved. But We had Nathan and Hopper both commit to other schools this week. Hopper ended up committing to Duke, and Nathan ends up committing to Florida State University. And now that I'm looking at this recruiting board again, we actually didn't even have Zach Thomas on campus this week. We had Roy on campus, so that visit definitely shot us back up there. But that was our last string in the bag for him. Hopefully, Tennessee does not make a big push going forward. Also, James Willingham looks like we are going to get a commit from him. Um, same with Ben Humphreys. He was on campus this week. Very, very good visit for him. And also, Paul Sampson was on campus this week. Pretty good for him. Still hasn't shot up with his other team, so it does look like we are going to end up landing Sampson and Humphreys. Also, Willingham should land. Torrance is still up in the air, depending on what Tennessee does with him going forward. But we already shot our shot. We've done everything we can do. Um, just got to wait it out and see. So now we got about 100 hours left of recruiting. So I'm going to go ahead and start targeting these three stars. Gonna go ahead and set up a visit for Glacius to come down and see us. 
junior Cleveland. Haven't really looked at him so far, but he's a four star. Uh, nobody's really offered him anything this year. Usually four stars is more advanced at this stage. So what I'm thinking is he's probably a bust. But that's it for this video, guys. Second episode of GSU Rebuild. I'm out. Peace. Nah, 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 nah. This ain't the life I want no more. I gotta grind for better.